Well, good evening, friends. Thank you for joining us for this Good Friday Tin Embrace service. You know, this is one of my favorite worship services during the year, not because it is a joyful celebration, but because it is a solemn and meaningful service that reminds us of the passion of Jesus. This evening, we're going to be going through a Tin Embrace service, which is a Latin word that means darkness. There'll be a number of candles lit here on our altar, and we will read through the passion of Jesus, mostly using the Gospel of Luke. And after we read each one of these passages, we'll extinguish one of the candles until ultimately and finally the Christ candle is extinguished. And we'll leave this place in darkness, only to return again on Easter morning to find that Christ candle burning bright and declare that Jesus is risen. On a normal uh, Good Friday service, we would be gathered together. Here I am in the prayer chapel at Kenwick First tonight. But on a normal uh, Good Friday service, we would be gathered together and we would sing hymns and we would hear these words uh, read for us and we'd watch as each of these candles are extinguished. At the end of the service, we would hear the bells toll and we would leave in darkness, uh, remembering and contemplating all that Jesus has done and sacrificed for us. But this year, it seems like every service this Lent has started with a but. But this year, since we can't gather together in the same place, I'm going to do things a little bit different. We'll still hear, hear the passage uh, from Luke about the passion of Jesus. We'll still extinguish these candles. We'll still hear the bells toll at the end. But during each one of these readings, I've included a piece of artwork. Some of them are classical paintings. Some of them are sculptures. Some are stained glass, some are uh, Latin American art or African American art. And as we read through each of these passages, I want you to, to look at these images and I want you to use them as a, a way to meditate on what this scripture is talking about. Think about what the artist is trying to convey in each of these images. And I hope that this is a solemn and a meaningful service for you, even if we can't gather together here in the same place. I pray that this Ten Embrace service is a symbol of Christ's passion for us. I pray that as we watch this service unfold, we would be reminded of Jesus' love for us and the sacrifice that he made for us. So friends, let's embark on this Ten Embrace service together. I'm going to invite you to, to sing along with us as Amberly leads us in our opening song, and then we'll embark on the passion of Jesus. Welcome, friends. Breathe. 
Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them. He knelt down and he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and a man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this! And he touched the man's ear, and it was healed. Then Jesus said to the, to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with him. A, se a servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I do not know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you were talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and he wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and they demanded, Prophecy! Who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Christ, they said, then tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are right in saying I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his very own lips. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 27, verses 1 through 14. 
Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him and led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the silver coins to the chief priests and to the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the 30 pieces of silver into the temple and he left. Then he went away and he hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and he said, It is against the law for us to put this into the temple treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy a potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the thirty silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy a potter's field. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Do you hear the testimony that they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge. It was to the great amazement of the governor. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 13 through 25. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and he said to them, 
You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I've examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice, they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them. Why, what crime has this man committed? I found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they instantly demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demands. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. And one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As they led him away, they seized Simon the Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country. And they put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, and the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. Soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the King of the Jews, then save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Then save yourself and save us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserved, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise.
from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, Lama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, and he filled it with wine vinegar and put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. And they came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and explained, Surely he was the Son of God. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decisions or their actions. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and then he took it down and he wrapped it in linen cloth and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. 
Then they went home and they prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandments.